To balance this double displacement reaction, we have copper 2 sulfate plus sodium phosphate. And we'll count the atoms up on each side and balance the equation. We have one copper. And then this SO4, it stays together. We have it here and we have it over here. So we're just going to count that as one thing. And this is a trick you can use with double displacement reactions. It makes them a lot easier when you have these polyatomic ions. We have three sodiums and then one phosphate. We have the phosphate here and then again on this side. Three coppers, one sulfate ion, two sodium, and then the phosphate, the PO4, we have one times two. That gives us two of those. So this makes it a lot neater. Either way, you'll get the same answer, but this technique makes it a little bit easier for us. Let's see. Let's put a three in front of the copper sulfate first. That'll balance the coppers. One times three. That'll give us three copper atoms. Those are balanced. And then the sulfate, one times three. So now we have three sulfate ions. Let's put a three in front of the sodium sulfate and we can balance those. We have our one sulfate times three. Gives us three of those. They're balanced. Sodium two times three. Now we have six sodium atoms, but that's okay. If we put a coefficient of two in front of the sodium phosphate, three times two, that gives us six. That's balanced. And this two applies to everything here. So if our one phosphate times the two gives us two of those and we're done, this equation is balanced. So good trick to use when you have double displacement reactions with these polyatomic ions that appear on both sides of the equation. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for CuSO4 plus Na3PO4. Thanks for watching.